Hi, I'm Michael McNeil, and I'm a member of our managed OpenShift Black Belt team here at Red Hat. I'm here with my colleague, Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Collins, also a member of the managed OpenShift Black Belt team. So today we're going to talk about IAM roles for service accounts. It's also known as pod identity. This will show you how you can create a secure connection from your ROSA cluster to a database like DynamoDB, RDS, Aurora, or anything like that. So, Kevin, tell me why I would want to use this as opposed to just using static credentials. I mean, uh, I could just use an IAM key or something like that. What, what's really the benefit of using IRSA? Yeah, there's several reasons why. This also, the, using IRSA follows the AWS Well Architected Framework. We're creating a trust policy between our pod that's running our application and DynamoDB. And it's going to use short-term credentials that are going to rotate each time we call into uh, DynamoDB. So it provides a more secure and much more granular uh, connection to the database as we're going to go through today. Awesome. Well, how does it really work? Yeah, so it works by starting it at Rosa. We're going to first create a service account. And like this is nothing new for all OpenShift applications that need special permissions. We recommend you use a service account to run the application. So after we have the service account, we'll put a number one there. Now we need to set up a couple of things in IAM. First thing we're going to do is create a policy, an IAM policy in, in uh, AWS. And the first thing, uh, the policy contains several things. One is a uh, uh, principle. And the principle says who can do which action. Action, the person that's going to take the action on our behalf is this OIDC provider. So this OIDC provider with a ROSA cluster, it, we get this by default when we create the cluster. So the OIDC provider provides short-term credentials for pods running in, in the cluster. So for example, um, there's many parts of, of ROSA. One is, say, the image registry, right? The image registry needs permissions to do certain things. Namely, it needs to access S3 to store the images. So if S3 need, or if the registry needs access X3, S3 to store images, it doesn't need to do things like spit them to EC2 instances. So using short-term credentials with the OIDC provider, we're able to give the pods that control the registry permissions uh, to only connect to S3 and not do things it doesn't need to do, like spin up EC2 instances. So we're going to use the same principle here, uh, of creating a new policy, and it's going to be the OIDC provider is going to perform the action on our behalf. Also in a policy, we have an action. In this case, we're going to have assume role. So we're going to let the OIDC provider assume a role that we're going to create in a minute. And then we have, uh, what can it do? So there's a, an uh, effect. And this typically would be allow or deny. So in this case, we want to allow the OIDC provider to assume a role. And last thing we have is a condition. So a condition says, are there any special circumstances on when this should occur? And we're going to add one that says the service account. Uh, if the service account is the one that requested it, then this can be done. Also, what this is going to do is cr create a trust policy with uh, a role. We're going to create a new role. So this too, we create that policy. Then we create a role. We'll call it like my app DB role. It can be whatever name you want, obviously. And then we assign this policy to that role. So at this point, we have a policy. Let's the OIDC provider assume the role and create the STS credentials. But we don't. We haven't given it access to anything yet which is the next step. We create another policy. We don't create the policy. We attach a policy. So within AWS, like DynamoDB is an example, they have a lot of pre-built policies. So we can create our own or use something that comes with AWS. And they have one called uh, AWS uh, Dynamo. I'll do some shorthand here. There's one called full access. So we'll assign this policy to that role. And then the, this completes the, the IAM portion of this. Awesome. So I understand this, but I'm confused. How does the like service account actually know anything about what's going on at AWS IAM? Great question. So when we create the service account, we create an annotation. And this annotation says, you know, we're, we're going to need some additional uh, permissions here, and we're going to set the ODC provider and the role to be uh, called when, when the service account needs to access uh, Dynamo DB. Got it. So the annotation says that the role is this, so it knows what to do. But how does this all work behind the scenes? Because an annotation really doesn't actually do anything to the pod that's running. 
Right. So that's the next step. So, um, so first we describe this is all a user has to do to set this up. But the way it works in the back end is when when you we have an application, just create a pod here. So the pod is created initially. There's something called the pod identity, or shorthand it, webhook. And this webhook is listening for a different event. So when the pod starts, it says, hey, there's a annotation on the service account. I need to go uh, go to the provider that's in the annotation, which is the IDC provider, and I need to get a token because I know I'm going to be requested later to perform some action. So the pod identity webhook returns that there, and this is a JSON web token. So the ODC provider provides that token, stores it in the pod. Awesome. So once we do all of that, right, how do you go about changing the permissions of this role? So like, I don't want to give it full access. AWS says I need to have least privilege. What, what do I do to reduce the scope of that role? You simply would uh, change this role. So you can remove the full access policy. You could do something like read only uh, as an example. Oh, that seems a lot easier to just reduce policy. So there's nothing else I have to change here. I just simply change the policy at AWS and then it changes the permission. That's right. Awesome. That's great. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have more information, if you have more questions um, or, or looking for more information, on Red Hat products and services, feel free to visit our website at www.redhat.com.